everybody, Dr. Strong here, and today we're going to be talking about why protein is so important for building muscle and losing fat. And in this video, I'm going to be discussing how it affects anywhere from your satiation all the way down to how it affects you at a hormonal level from your thyroid hormone to your sex hormones and just how crucial this important macronutrient is to fueling you for your life so that you can do the things that you want so that you can have a high quality of life so that you can look as good as you want to look. So let's dive into it. So protein is one of the top three macronutrients. So we have carbohydrates, we have fats, and we have protein. Protein is the one that everybody associates with building muscle, with being in shape, uh, with basically having like that good aesthetic look. And the thing about protein is that it actually goes a lot deeper than that. With protein, it gets broken down into amino acids. And there are what are called uh, essential amino acids. There in debates, everybody debates, there are nine to 11 of them. And this is why I say that if you're not taking an amino acid supplement, it's definitely something you, you should do because amino acids will build anything from your hair cells to your muscles, to your bones, pretty much everything in your body. So think about it like the essential tools in your body that make up pretty much everything. So if you were going to build a house and you're going to you know, frame it, you're going to put the concrete down, amino acids would be like the, you know, the tree and they would be the gravel and they would be the, the mud and they would be basically all the little foundational parts that make up the bigger whole. So with that being said, you can almost take amino acids and convert them to anything in your body. And that's why they're so useful because if you're lacking in one area, uh, the body can take those amino acids and they can use them to stimulate uh, muscle growth, rebuild hair cells, rebuild bone, uh, rebuild neurotransmitters, help you heal faster, whatever it may be. And that's the great thing about them. So. With this being said, uh, what we want to look at is how much protein should you be eating per day? And this varies, especially depending on your activity level, but you want to be eating at least 0.8 to 1 gram per pound of body weight per day, okay? So this is how much you want to be eating because this is going to at least help you maintain. Now, if you want to improve your muscle mass and if you want to lose weight, I would say that you need to bump this up to one to 1.5 grams per pound per body weight per day, okay? So with that being said, if you're like wanting to add on muscle, whether it's five to 10 pounds, then this is probably where you want to be. Now, like, the, like that being said, one to 1.5 to two, with this, that's if you want to increase, you know, maybe, you know, 10 pounds to 15 pounds to 20 pounds of muscle doing that. Now that is very hard to do and it's that's a lot of eating. So one of the main ways that I recommend you do it is either using protein shakes or like I mentioned earlier, you can use amino acids in order to boost up your protein intake so that you can achieve whatever your goal is. Now, if you're just like kind of wanting to lose weight and you're just kind of wanting to build a little bit of muscle in the meantime, then I would stick with this 0.8 to one gram. And how do you do this? Most of the time what I tell people to do is I, I instruct most people to eat at least five times a day. So that looks like you're going to eat breakfast, then you have two and a half hours later a snack, not a full meal, lunch, two and a half hours later a snack, and then another meal. And with that, that helps keep the blood sugar balanced. Now people argue this all the time, but it depends on what foods you're eating. Now, if you're eating high glycemic foods that spike your insulin up and then crash it down, then yes, that's a problem. But if you're eating consistently uh, throughout the day, then what that will do is it will stabilize your blood sugar and it will stabilize your insulin levels so that you're not diving into these insulin resistant type issues, your energy isn't falling, you're not falling into these awful cortisol patterns that I see a lot of people struggling with just today due to American society. So with that being said, 
that's kind of like your go-to metric for how much protein you want to take in order to do some sort of fat loss. Now, with that being said, another thing that we want to map out is that this will greatly affect your hormones uh, because this is what your normal cortisol rhythm should look like and then it starts spiking up a little bit at the end. But a lot of people, what they do is they do a lot of caffeine in the morning and this will actually spike your cortisol levels back up. And as you can see, this is an abnormal rhythm. So if this is around 12 p.m., you know, this is kind of around like 7 a.m. And so what will happen is you end up getting this reverse curve uh, that most people, you know, I see just because they're so busy or they're like, I got to do a bunch of work. So they're going to do coffee or they're going to do an energy drink or something like that. But what happens is over time, this will actually reverse your normal cortisol rhythm. And then this is what happens when people get insomnia, they get chronic fatigue, brain fog, and a bunch of other issues because cortisol will eventually break down your stomach lining and it robs it of an amino acid called glutamine. So that is another reason why you want to do protein because you can actually use the glutamine in it in order to repair the stomach lining and give you uh, a very good digestive system. So with that being said, um, you want to try to eat at least 30 minutes when you wake up, eat within that time frame because that will help stabilize this blood sugar. So. With that, cortisol is, uh, I know I'm going off track here, but if you look up like hypercorticalism or Cushing's disease, what you will see is that a lot of people gain the weight around the lower abdomen or the thighs. And a lot of times that's due to like almost this autoimmune type issue, like it's called Cushing's disease. And what you see is that Cushing's disease is actually a cortisol problem. And that's why you see people after they get corticosteroid shots or anything like that, they get like this hump on their back and then they just blow up in the midsection, especially people that have relied on it for years, will end up looking, having almost the same exact presentation. Now, with that, cortisol will actually inhibit, so it inhibits your testosterone, your estrogen, and your progesterone. So it inhibits your sex hormones, but it also inhibits your TSH and your T3. So what does all of this do? This all leads to a decreased metabolism. So if you wonder why you're having trouble losing weight, this is a big part of it. But what we can use, what we can do is we can use protein basically in meals to inhibit cortisol. So a double negative equals a positive, so then we actually would increase our metabolism, right? So we'd be able to build up the muscle, we'd be able to burn the fat that we're having trouble getting rid of. So this is why protein is so essential to weight loss and just kind of how you can biohack your system in order to get uh, an increased metabolism so you can get that aesthetic look that you want. And it's really simple, it's a really simple formula. So don't try to make it more complex than it is. It's just look at what your goal is, use kind of like those little three distinctions. Are you just trying to lose weight? Do you want to put on a little bit of muscle? Or are you trying to put on a lot of muscle? That will tell you how much protein you need to do uh, throughout the day. And then you just take that, you divide it, and that's how much protein you need to be eating each meal. Now, I know that that can seem a little bit cumbersome, but the easiest way that I've found is just to use protein shakes or bars. You want to avoid things that have a lot of sugar, uh, a lot of additives in them, because even those can spike your blood sugar and cause a lot of issues. So you wanna be very careful about what type of bars that you're using, like lar bars, I mean, they taste really good, and but they have almost like 30 to 40 grams of sugar in them per bar, which is going to really affect this here, which as we can see later on down the road will affect your sex hormones, and then it'll also affect your thyroid hormones as well. So you wanna be very careful about that and what's going on. And we want to always remember, we want to stimulate our metabolism. We don't want to inhibit it. Um, 
But the great thing is, is that you can even, if you have digestive issues, it makes it a little bit harder. So you should definitely always do some sort of gut program at, at first to make sure that you can digest proteins. One of the things that you can tell about protein maldigestion is that if your farts stink, so if you have stinky farts, a lot of the times it means that you're not digesting proteins appropriately because when proteins have a sulfur component to them and that sulfur component smells like rotten eggs if you've ever been in a sulfur field or anything like that. So uh, that will cause your farts to smell and cause them to stink. So you wanna be careful about that. That can be an indication that then you don't want to eat more protein because you're not breaking it down anyways and then your husband or your wife or your girlfriend or whoever is going to be like you need to stop eating so much protein you have stinky farts but in reality they just have proper maldigest or they have maldigestive issues so i hope this was helpful this is a very general overview and a quick view and just some very quick tips please like and subscribe if you found this uh, content helpful and um you know, if you have any comments, please comment below if there's anything else that I can make and kind of explain, like if you're struggling with weight loss, if you're struggling with hormones, whether it's uh, testosterone, estrogen, your thyroid hormone, your metabolism, there is no pill that will fix this. It all has to be done naturally through natural mechanisms and your diet is one of the best ones. If you comment below, then I'll either send you a free meal plan uh, so you can, don't even have to think about it, and then uh, I'll send you one of my books as well that I've written. And yeah, so I hope you all have a great day. Hopefully you found this useful, and I will see you next time. Bye.